So as I look at these red blood cells, I just want you to notice how in that, uh, on those cells on the side, they are disc shaped. They have an indent in the middle and they kind of have a round, like almost a, um, like an inner tube. If you were going to put a, a wrap around an inner tube, the outside is fuller and the inside indents. And the reason why that happens is uh, you can see that all of these come from the bone marrow. We're going to talk about red blood cells today, but the red blood cells are made in the same bath of, of inflammatory markers that your white blood cells and your platelets. And we could go on and on and on about all the things that happen after that in your lymph cells, but that's for a different topic. When you look at red blood cells and how well they wiggle through that calcified area that my dad had in his coronary arteries, it's dependent on how much antifreeze is inside those little cells. Okay, so that sounds weird, right? Antifreeze is that mention I had earlier that if you want these, these, these red blood cells that squish through a tight opening in your arteries uh, throughout your body, or if you're looking for them to not clot, not be sticky, we, want, we call those healthy, and it's, they're healthy because they are able to change shape as they go through those tiny little parts of your body. That is predictive if you've got more omega-3 and more omega-6 and less trans fats in your red blood cells. So I like to think of them as healthy red blood cells versus not healthy red blood cells. It might be a little bit rudimentary, but I think you're going to get the punchline here. So if your omega-3 index is high, you have healthy red blood cells. Uh, we know that cholesterol in general, and I know cholesterol gets this really bad reputation for being this heart attack predictor, but it is your fuel. It is your energy. And when cholesterol uh, is, in, is in flux, in flowing, I, the other, about two weeks ago, I went through how cholesterol, when it's stuck and it cannot recycle, that's when it oxidizes. It becomes a bullet inside their blood vessels. When cholesterol is doing its job and delivering energy and then recycling back through the liver, when it's in that fluid motion, that is when it's doing its job and it's a predictor of healthy red blood cells. Animal fats predict flexible red blood cells. Low trans fats, and that's really important uh, for when we, we bring a little bit of credibility back to my report here. So again, just looking at the unhealthy red blood cells, uh, here we've got a picture of those glucose floating through there. That's a high inflammatory state. We know that uh, A1Cs are going to be um, higher. The, the body will have a higher sticky factor, if you would. Um, and as you look at unhealthy red blood cells, they get into tiny little places and they block, they block the flow of blood. Uh, that's the dangerous part. When you look at unhealthy red blood cells, as your DHA, uh, as your red blood cells finding those two, uh, two cell components, um, uh, excuse me, two fat components found in red blood cells, your EPA and DHA, the higher those numbers got, the higher the percentages got, uh, the less there was a heart attack. So again, highly correlated uh, to preventing heart attacks when you could raise your uh, omega-3s within your red blood cells. Okay, so this is the part where um, I'm going to tell you my number from here. The desirable range, when I got my test back, I was at, I think it was 4.3. <laughs> so you can see that a typical for the United States is uh, right around a 4, and I'm definitely there. Uh, my my uh, omega-3 index was 4.3. Your body and infection. So off to the side there, you've got red blood cells, right? They come from your bone marrow. And we just talked about how important it is that your red blood cells have some antifreeze in the lining of the skin cells of those red blood cells. And I don't mean literal antifreeze. I mean that they have some animal fat cholesterol. So omega-6 and omega-3, they do keep that, that uh, red blood cell able to change shape. Uh, that allows those red blood cells to squeeze through narrowed arteries throughout the body, even when you've had uh, calcification in your coronary arteries like my dad. Uh, his red blood cells have not caused any stroke and have not, um, that we know of anyway, uh, have, have not caused him to, uh, to have a lethal heart attack. 
But what I also want to point out is in that bone marrow, where those red blood cells are made, there's a lining to white blood cells. There are linings to platelet cells. There's linings to your heart cells, to your brain cells. And again, those cells have rules too. When you have a high inflammatory state, uh, you will find that your immune system does not work as well. So this slide is a little technical, so bear with me. I just wanted to point out, this is another cell membrane, and you've got some channels that change how well those um, sodium and, and uh, calcium fluctuate in and out that cell. But if you can see that pink cell at the top with the kind of purple nucleus, and it's kind of got three little parts to this nucleus, uh, that is a, a special white blood cell that is trying to detect if there's any invaders. And it's really important that if you have inflammation, that little turkey can do its job. Part of how it does its job is it's not overwhelmed with inflammation. And that inflammation will shut down your response. Um, that having a very flexible red blood cell, which you can measure, uh, and, and then having a very flexible white blood cell system, as well as low inflammatory markers, helps your body improve uh, the way it fights infection. Now, this is not an opinion. Uh, this is the study from 2019, just this last year, that looked into infectious disease and how the ketogenic diet protected uh, the gamma delta T cells. Okay, that sounds like a lot. I know, don't, don't, don't roll your eyes. I love this. So we're looking at how well white blood cells work inside somebody whose ketones were in a ketogenic state. Uh, ketogenic state means you have a doctor boss ratio under 80 at least, or under 40 if you're really fighting infection. When grandpa was fighting off that pseudomonas in his body at 77, his doctor boss ratio was under 20. So his GKI, for those of you using that, uh, um, was one to one or better. So meaning more ketones than there were glucose in his body. And his immune system fought off this awfully deadly infection, way more deadly than coronavirus. Uh, this study was specifically looking at uh, taking mice, and they did, they did a really cool way of kind of keeping the carbohydrates similar, keeping their weight similar, um, but having one be in a ketogenic state, um, having another one have ketones flow, flowing, um, they, they had a unique way they did that, but they weren't metabolically making the ketones themselves, which is different. That's like if I drink ketones versus um, if I make ketones, again, making them yourself is the most robust health that we have. But it's not without uh, saying that you don't... Um, uh, you, you do increase them when you swallow ketones. But what this study showed was, um, I think I, yeah, whew, okay. Uh, I was like, did I put that in there? What this showed was that if you had a ketogenic state, you had a higher chance of fighting off influenza A. And they were able to study this by looking at how quickly the T cells, which again, that's a very special white blood cell, that's uh, it, it like looks for invaders. Um, there's certain T cells that take care of your skin, you know, invasions through the skin. There's certain T cells that look at your upper respiratory tract. And in this study, when they were looking at influenza A, uh, they wanted to see how well those T cells, specifically the gamma delta T cells, which most of the world doesn't care about, but those uh, those scientists out there that are watching this, I I do think that's a powerful deal, that they were able to watch. Um, the, the virus was destroyed easier. Uh, the response of that, uh, that epithelial lining where you, that's your first line of defense when something invades your body through breathing it. And that is how coronavirus gets in. Uh, you don't get the privilege of saying, okay, I'm gonna wear a mask and it's not gonna get through the mask. Or when you take off the mask to get a drink of water, now you breathe in air that was still there before. Uh, I've, said several times on a couple of radio shows, you cannot control what happens to uh, the air around you. You can control what's happening inside your white blood cells and red blood cells. And having a state of ketosis as your primary defense for fighting infection uh, is a way better strategy <laughs> than trying to wear a mask to prevent it. Uh, wearing a mask is fine. Washing your hands is a good idea. Covering your mouth when you sneeze is very helpful for the rest of us. 
But if you're using that as your primary way to defend against getting an infection, you've got a failing strategy. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.